Good day, good day, good day once again, everyone. And uh, of course, we are back again with your favorite uncle. And this time we're going to be looking at assets and bases. Of course, I know many of you have been requesting for me to look at assets and bases in preparation for your exams. All right, so if you haven't subscribed, just please make sure that you're part of the family. And of course, you can get in touch with us. All our details are found on the description of this video. And by the way, uh, please just make sure that at the end of this lesson, you just like and share to as many people as possible. Tell them that your favorite uncle continues to be the plug. All right, now let's get into the question. So they say to us, we've got the reaction between sulfa and uh, uh, sulfuric acid, rather, uh, solution and sodium hydroxide, which is, uh, um, so it's investigating investigated rather using the apparatus below okay please just make sure that you know how to you know label and navigate your way around this apparatus okay they say write down the name of the experimental procedure illustrated above of course we all know that this would be a titration okay uh, this is where we are trying to neutralize uh, you know, an acid with a base, all right? Of course, we're trying to determine the concentration of any acid or base by using a standard solution of either acid or base, right? Now, they say, what is the function of the burette? Now, remember, what we use the burette for uh, is to regulate the amount of acid or base, right, uh, Into the that goes into the Ellen Mayer flask. And, of course, it helps us with measuring, of course, uh, the amount of acid or base that goes into the Ellen Mayer flask, okay? Right, so, um, and they say, it define an acid in terms of the Arrhenius theory. Okay, I won't write this down. Uh, please remember that, uh, you know, an acid is a substance that, uh, in this case, uh, donates uh, hydronium ions, right? Uh, when it is dissolved in solution, okay? That's an acid. Uh, remember that it's a, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a substance that donates hydronium ions. Right. Um, now, in this case, they say, give a reason why sulfuric acid is, is regarded as a strong acid. I'm sure you can see that in the flow of this question, you know, you've got a lot of theoretical questions. And, you know, some of you, when you think about acids and bases, you always think of those uh, seven mark questions. All right. And uh, one thing that I want you to always be mindful of is that acids and base does not only constitute of those seven mark questions. There, uh, there is that theory that you must also be able to master. OK, right. So now. Um, uh, so why is sulfuric acid regarded as a strong acid? Remember, it ionizes completely in solution. And so it gives off a high concentration of hydronium ions. Uh, of course, we know that it does not ionize completely, but it uh, ionizes almost completely. OK, right. So in this case, um, we say uh, 7.5 bromothymol blue is used as an indicator. Right. They say write down the color change that will take place in the Ellen Mayer flask uh, on reaching the end point of this titration. OK. Uh, now. Obviously, you'd have to know the color changes of bromothymol blue, how it uh, is in the acid or the base. Honestly speaking, <laughs> your favorite uncle doesn't know uh, really on this one. Uh, I really forgot uh, what the uh, what uh, bromothymol blue looks like, uh, whether it's acidic, you know, it's it's yellow in the acid or whether it's green. I'm not too sure. But somewhere between blue and yellow, just choose one. OK, uh, I hope that you will, <laughs> that you will not chastise me for this one. OK, right now I wanted to come to this question because essentially that's the part that I want to uh, kind of look at with you. Right. So they say to us. During the titration, a learner adds 25 cubic centimeters uh, of, a, uh, uh, of sodium hydroxide of concentration 0 0.1 to the Ellen Mayer, uh, Ellen Mayer flask and uh, titrates this solution with sulfuric acid of concentration 0 0.1. They say the balanced equation for this reaction that takes place is, okay? 
Now, they say determine the volume of sulfuric acid which must be added to neutralize the sodium hydroxide. Now, what we're going to do, remember, we're assuming in this case, of course, we're dealing with a complete titration. So we're going to say, okay, so we know concentration of the acid, volume of the acid divided by CB, VB, uh, the volume of the base. This is equal to Na over NB, right? Uh, sorry for writing this in such a clumsy way. Right. So now um, we don't necessarily need to, uh, you know, um, convert uh, the volumes in this case for as long as both volumes are in the same units. So I'm going to use 0 0.1. OK, that's the con that's the concentration of the acid and the volume of the acid is the one that we want to find. Uh, a, by the way, does not necessarily mean it's the acid, but of course, uh, just for ease of use. I'm going to take that as our acid, right? And then concentration of the base would be 0 0.1 as well. And the volume of the base is 25 cubic centimeters. Now, I want you to remember uh, the Na and Nb part. What you get it from or where you get it from is from the coefficients of the acid and the base uh, in your reaction. The coefficient of the acid, right? Notice uh, you've got a coefficient of 1 there and the coefficient of the base, you've got a coefficient of 2 uh, for the sodium hydroxide in your reaction. Okay, so what you can simply do, just cross multiply, of course, uh, 0 0.1 VA times 2, that would be 0 0.2 VA and that would be 0 0.1 times uh, 25 times 1, that would give you 2.5, okay? So we're going to divide, sorry, both sides by 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.2. Okay, and I'm uh, quite certain you can see uh, so that you don't say I am cheating on you, uh, cheating you rather, at 12.5. Okay, so it means that the volume of the acid in this case would be 12.5 cubic centimeters. Okay. Right, now, so we've got the volume of the acid that must be in the Ellen Mayer flask. In fact, we could have even predicted it, right? But nonetheless, that's a story, that's another story for another day. Now, they say to us, if the learner passes the end point, so that's 7.7, .7, right? If the learner passes the end point by adding 5 cubic centimeters of the same sulfuric acid in excess, so it means instead of the learner uh, pouring 12.5, uh, the learner adds 12.5 plus an additional 5 cubic centimeters, right? So what is that going to do? Of course, it's going to make our, um, you know, our solution uh, in this case uh, to not be neutralized, right? So it means we would pass the end point uh, in that case. So what does it mean? It means that the resulting solution should be acidic, right? Why? Because you'd have more moles of acid than you would the base, right? So they say that uh, we are in excess by 5 cubic centimeters, right? Uh, now they say calculate the pH of the solution in the flask. All right, now let's talk. Let's talk. So it means... In this case, what would now cause the pH of the solution? Ideally, our solution would have had a pH of 7, right? Uh, because it would be neutral, right? But now, it would be acidic. But what would cause the acidity? It would be the excess moles of uh, sulfuric acid that would have been added, the 5 cubic centimeters, right? So what I'm going to do is... Let's find out how many moles of sulfuric acid would have. We've got the volume and we know what the concentration is. It's 0 0.1 because they said the same solution, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to say, look, so concentration, we know it's number of moles divided by volume. My concentration is 0 0.1. I want the number of moles and my volume. And by the way, please remember when I use this formula, it means that my volume must always be in cubic uh, decimeters, right? So that's five cubic centimeters. Remember to convert it to cubic decimeters. You divide that by a thousand. 
Okay, so 5 divided by 1,000 would give us 0 0.005, okay? So it means in this case, this would be 0 0.005 there. And of course, we're going to multiply. Uh, cross multiply, it means that the number of moles, okay, would be in this case 0 0.0005 moles. So it means these are the moles of acid that would be in excess, right? That would cause, uh, you know, the resulting solution to be acidic, okay? But remember, we're not looking for the number of moles. In order for us to calculate pH, we need to get the concentration of the hydronium ions. And we need to be careful because in this case, we're dealing with, um, you know, uh, uh, sulfuric acid. So what we're going to do is say, okay, so for the concentration um, of uh, sulfuric acid, so for the concentration of sulfuric acid, H2SO4, we're simply going to have, uh, in this particular case, number of moles divided by the volume. But now you need to be careful about the volume, right? So remember, we've got 0 0.0005. That's the number of moles. And our volume in this case would be, now, the resulting volume. Remember, you added the 12.5 cubic centimeters uh, to the 25 cubic centimeters, but also the additional 5 cubic centimeters. So your total volume in this case would have been 25 plus 12.5 plus an additional 5 cubic centimeters, right? So, uh, what we're going to do is that we've got uh, 25 plus 17.5. Uh, okay, let's, uh, so that's 12.5. 12, 12 uh, 25 plus 17.5. Uh, and in this case, we've got 42.5. So it means our resulting volume in this case is 42.5 cubic centimeters, Okay, but remember, we need to convert it to cubic decimeters, right? So we're going to divide that by a thousand. Okay. All right, so we've got that divide by 1000. Uh, and that gives us 0 0.0425, right? So what we simply do is calculate the concentration of sulfuric acid and say, well, we've got 0 0.0005. Okay, and we divide that by 0 0.0425, okay, which is the resulting uh, volume uh, or rather concentration, right? So in this case, what do we have? We've got 0 0.01, well, I'm just going to say 0 0.012, if you don't mind, uh, moles per cubic decimeters. So this is the concentration of sulfuric acid, okay? But remember, to calculate pH, you don't take the concentration of sulfuric acid, but you take the concentration of hydronium ions. But what we need to note in this case is how sulfuric acid ionizes, right? And in this case, how does sulfuric acid ionize, right? It now becomes 2H plus plus SO4 2 minus, okay, if you want to, you could have written the entire reaction inclusive of water, uh, but in this case, this works very well. So in this case, uh, it means that for every one mole of sulfuric acid, uh, you actually give away uh, two uh, hydronium ions, okay? Uh, remember H plus and H3O plus, uh, that's exactly the same thing right? So for every one, I've got two. So in this case, I've got 0 0.012. So I'll say for every one mole of uh, sulfuric acid, I get two moles of hydronium ions. I'm sure you guys can already see that I'll, I'll have actually twice that number, right? Uh, so in this question, in this case, for, uh, uh, for 0 0.012, how many moles of hydronium ions uh, or rather how many, uh, what it would be the concentration of hydronium ions. And I can do this with concentration because uh, in this case, remember that uh, the volume is the same, right? So I'm, I'll take my, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, my coefficients 
in this case, 1 times x, that will give me x. 2 times 0 0.012, that will give us 0 0.024. Uh, remember, this would now, uh, it means that x represents the concentration of hydronium ions uh, in solution, right? So uh, that would mean the concentration of hydronium ions in this case should be 0 0.024 moles per cubic decimeters, okay? And so now we can calculate the pH. Remember, every time we need to calculate pH, we need to determine the concentration of our hydronium ions. So in this case, I'm going to simply say, well, pH would be minus the log of hydronium ions, okay? But remember, hydronium ions and H plus is exactly the same thing, okay? So don't think that uh, I'm substituting something that's incorrect there. So that's minus the log of uh, 0 0.024, okay? And of course, what would be our resulting solution? Uh, so that would be minus the log of 0 0.024. And in this case, we get 1.62. So it means that the pH of the solution would be 1.62. And please remember that pH does not have any units. All right. I hope that question was really, really nicely, adequately answered and that you were able to follow. And please remember, don't panic when it comes to acids and bases, right? Also master the theory so that you can be able, uh, you know, to, to do well uh, in this section, okay? It does not only compose of, uh, you know, those uh, seven mark questions. Uh, but um, for those of you who are struggling with this uh, part, Please uh, just make uh, do yourself a favor and watch my series on uh, you know stoichiometry so that you can develop the you know the thinking and the knowledge behind uh, wa uh, be behind acids and bases and then you can watch acids and bases afterwards and it will help you develop a clear understanding of this section. Otherwise, ladies and gents, please don't forget to hit that like button and of course if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and your favorite uncle. We'll see you again next time. Shop, shop.